What is the worst? Welcome back to Rubber Rescue with me, Foggy Plays on FM 22. Today, we're doing the end of season review, where, as you can see, it was quite a successful season. We've won five trophies according to this, but we actually won six. We won the Irish Premier Division, the Irish Senior Challenge Cup, the All Ireland Champions Cup, the Irish League Cup, the Irish President's Cup, and the Munster Senior League Cup. The Munster Senior Cup. Munster Senior, yeah, Munster Senior Cup. Um, but again, as I always say, that doesn't show up here. So six trophies this year. Quite a good season, one could say. Um, if you don't agree with me, then uh, I apologise. But it's factual. Um, the signing of the season has gone to Vestergaard. To be fair, the dude was absolutely exceptional. Um, and they're delighted because he didn't cost any money. And we got a £1 million release clause on him. Never mind the fact that he was exceptional. Uh, 13 goals, 13 assists in 37 appearances on a 7.45 average. That's pretty good. Um, Oseni, pretty happy with him as well. I have to say, I'm also pretty happy with him. Uh, Philip Vincent Day, we've actually paid a little bit extra for him. There was like £247 paid to Bashford for us winning the Senior Cup, Challenge Cup or whatever it was, which I thought that was pretty... Pretty interesting. Um, I'm disappointed by Aquaflex, but he, he's not as good as he could be. Uh, but that's a decent amount of players that have come in. We did sign more players, but not everyone is there because some of them came in and went straight back out on loan. Um, Colin Whelan, smashing it in the Champions League. They're delighted. Second qualifying round. We made it to the group stage. Uh, they wanted us to win the Premier Division. We did. All Ireland Cup, we won it. None of these really care. But look, see, Irish Munster Senior Cup. This is not important. Reached the quarterfinal. But it's because, like, we won it. But because, we're, it's just, it's very annoying. So, six trophies won. That's, uh, that's pretty good. If I do say so myself. Uh, biggest win was 8-1 against St. Pat's. The match to remember was 4-0 against Sparta Bragg. Where Gollum Whelan scored himself a cheeky little hat-trick. Goal of the season went to Emiran. A free kick from 29 meters mm. that was the 4-2 defeat that was the I think that was the first defeat in the league season that we had which was super super frustrating uh, the fact that we still have only a two star reputation is annoying I would, you think that because we've made it to the Champions League group stage and we did you know, pretty well we'd at least get half a star but nope still a two star club I'm interested to see will that change at some point. I mean, I'm keeping an eye on it. Because I'm a three star manager now. Um, sponsorship money. Is up just a smidge. Broadcast revenue. Is up a smidge. Corporate and hospitality. Is up. A decent amount. Doubled. Uh, competition prize money. 18 million. Up from 1.23 million a season. That's Champions League money for you my friends. If you want to do well in football manager. Just get in the Champions League. It's pretty, pretty simple. Champions League. We don't get much competition prize money in the. Irish Premier League so it's all Champions League um, and the match day commercial and retail has increased significantly as well Colin Whelan sells the most amount of shirts as you would expect he is a 60 goal a season striker uh, Coleman, Carlsberg, Chabozo and Iqbal make up the remainder of the top 5 I'm surprised Chabozo is there doesn't really get a huge amount of first team football um, and again this uh, best 11 is a little bit behind fm i don't think fully understands how to work out uh calendar seasons because jewish hasn't been with us at all this season jed bally as well so they're basing it over half of last season half of this season but giving the app uh, appearances goals and assists for last season except for jewish and jed bally because they're no longer at the club uh, as you can see, Chewish isn't having a great time either. Uh, we have one manager of the month for four months. As I said, we didn't win the manager of the year, which is just it's ridiculous. Uh, we did, however, have fans player of the season went to Carlsberg. He was exceptional. Young player of the season went to Carlsberg as well. Signing of the season went to Vescar. I'm surprised Vescar didn't win young player of the season. Uh, which is a goal of the season went to Emran. Top goal scorer was uh, Colin Whelan with 60 goals. As I said, uh, Carlsberg 20 Five assists. That is ridiculous. 25 assists. 
Uh, Colin Whelan had the most man of the match with 13. Highest average rating went to Kalsberg 7.7. And the most passes completed per 90 minutes was Ryan Coleman. I would have expected a playmaker to be there, but no centre-back. So we did break some records. Colin Whelan with 60 goals. Uh, also scored 39 goals in the league, which is the most anybody's ever done. Most assists by a player in the season is Paul Kalsberg with 25. Most man of the matches went to Kalsberg with 13. I think it's fair to say, Kalsberg, quite the signing. And he was free. Um, and we paid, the highest transfer fee ever paid was on Osene, 183,000. I think that's going to be a pretty good transfer for the future, if I do say so myself. Uh, Irish Under-21 Player of the Year went to Ryan Coleman, and the Young Player of the Year, uh, Irish Player of the Year went to Colum Whelan. I did say Ryan Coleman won the Young Player and the Under-21 Player. Uh, Colum Whelan also won the League of Ireland Top Goal Scorer, and Calsberg won Player of the Year, and Young Player of the Year. Fantastic. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I couldn't get manager of the year, so I kind of ruined it. Uh, we've done so well that we can't even get the amount of trophies on the screen. Um, I'm trying to get Sarajevo to give me the money for Chuich so I can get rid of his money off the um, the wage bill. The oh, we've we've broken the record for lowest attendance uh, because we didn't sell out against Shakhtar. Fantastic. Uh, that was the game against per- Porto, I think. Was the previous record uh, inducted into best 11 Prince fairly obviously is there because he's played the most uh, Kevin or yeah, Kevin O'Connor still there Coleman is still playing for us Ali Gilchrist what are you up to these days my friend East Sterling Shire he's playing that's important quickly Fabian Albrecht who has had a decent time yeah he's playing pretty often for a third division side in Germany Anyone else is or are still at the club? Dylan McGlade is now playing for Cheltenham. Well, he's a Cheltenham player. And we know Kim Murphy is playing for uh, Dundalk, who managed to finish third. Club Vision, uh, they were quite disappointed with our defensively solid football, or lack thereof. Um, we had the best defensive record in the league. So, I'm not 100% sure what they're talking about. They want us to maintain the... Club status is the most reputable in Ireland, which is easier said than done. We should probably should, we should be able to keep that. We're easily the most reputable team in the in the country. Uh, they want us to win the division. They want us to reach the second qualifying round of the Champions League again. Um, training facilities and the youth facilities will be finished before the end of next season. The training facility, I think, its training facilities are going to be done before then. Anyway, they're done in like twenty days. So we'll discuss the plans for next season. I'm just going to do it again. Win the league again. Uh, give a good account of ourselves. Fantastic. That's what it's after. Outline some promises. Um, younger players. Everyone's happy except for Cahill Heffernan. For some reason. Uh, trim the size. No. Just leave it at that. Enjoy your preseason, lads. Enjoy whatever it is you're going to do. Do we get to decide where we're going? We're going to be local again. Um, so yeah, it's been a been a successful season, one could say. Won everything we've entered, except for the Champions League. But that, that will come with time. We do have a couple of deals already incoming on the, the 2nd of January. Dan Duca is a Romanian under-21 international who was on an amateur contract. Popped up in my uh, scout report. He's coming in as a centre-back option. I think he's going to be pretty good. He's playing in the Romanian under 19s top league. So, you know, we all know. We all know. That's a really good league. Uh, Santiago Salcedo, player who came in. I came up with my. Uh, one of my scouts. Which scout actually found him? Just recruitment team. Okay. Uh, so, someone is off in Colombia because I've been getting an awful lot of Colombian players coming through my. Uh, scout reports recently so we picked him up because he looks like he could be pretty decent and Deng Bowen who we've had in uh, the journeyman last year he's playing for Shenzhen he's leaving Shenzhen and he's coming to play for us so another left back option he is a Chinese international so in theory that could help 
getting us some extra money, but I don't think it's going to. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, but we do have the money for Luke Keane, if we want it. Still have six million. It's gone down a smidge since last time. And we also have Charlie Savage has a sell-on clause as well. But with Luke, still not played for Man United yet. Still in the under 23. Still only 20. So we'll see how he gets on. We, have, we are scouting him. Um, cause I'm just I'm curious, I'm curious to see how good they they reckon he is. I th I think he'd he'd still walk into our first team again without a doubt. So we will be back in just a second. The Europa League draw will be at some point. Um, I actually have a quick scans. I don't want to ruin the surprise for myself. First knock around, the draw is in four days. So we'll probably come back for that. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the first round. First knockout round draw of the Europa Con or the Europa League, not the Europa Conference League. We're too good for that. Although we could end up playing in the Europa Conference League again. Hopefully not though. So we will be back for that in just a second. Right, fellas. So it is time for the Europa League first knockout round draw. And uh there are some strong teams. Just at a glance, Lazio, Dinamo Zagreb, Galatasaray, who managed to knock out Inter out of the Champions League, uh, Lille, Braga, Anderlecht, Leon. Young boys, Rangers. It's a it's, it's a hard time, regardless of who we draw. Uh, I don't see any teams in here where I go. Do you know what? I'd love to take them. Uh, what team would I like to play? Ludogorets, Celta Vigo. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I didn't want to be in the Europa League anyway, so we're going to be playing Europa League in February. So that's just a, a little little way off. Uh. That's fine. Um, as I said, in the not too distant future, we have elections. So when you come back from, or for the end of season, or the Champions League roundup, Champions League transfer roundup, um, before the start of the season, you're going to be able to find out who is our new chairman. Unless we keep the same chairman, and then that'll be just fantastic. So either way, that's fine. We have almost 11 million in the bank 4.7 million to spend transfer wise and 21,000 in wages so what could possibly go wrong and we already have three players joining us so i can't wait and if we do need money we obviously have luke Keane's 50 percent selling clause that we could sell but i don't want to do that if i don't have to so we will be back we will be back in just a second to round up the transfers that we've done and uh, we'll go from there, see what the, the story is. So don't go anywhere. Be right back. Right, fellas, we're back now for the uh, transfer roundup. And in the next episode, we're going to be taking on Celta Vigo in the next or the first knockout round of the Europa League, which should be fantastic. I'm not expecting an awful lot. Uh, but we have picked up a rivalry against Derry City. It's competitive. Um, these naturally occurring rivalries this is the first one we've gotten it's i'm so happy with it uh we have had kevin o'connor move up to quite high on the icons list which is fantastic paul kalsberg has made it on the icons list he, he always does that every club i i manage uh that he gets that he plays with uh he ends up on the icons list i think he was a legend at Dorog last year um but you know we're on the oh we're a legend i didn't realize we were a legend oh a cork city legend i'll have to go and say to the uh the lads at the next match i go to be like huh i'm actually a cork city legend uh but we've colin whelan ryan coleman ali gilchrist who only you know pretty decent for him uh onofriti and jake o'brien are all on the favored personnel i'm surprised uh colin whelan and ryan coleman are only favored personnel um we did get our new uh chairman He's done absolutely nothing, which is fantastic, as you would expect. Has done absolutely nothing. So, um, it didn't take money out of the club, which is the main thing. Left the transfer budget as it was. As you can see, we have not spent too much money. I don't think we've spent any money, actually. And the wage budget is the exact same as it was. We did have offers. Uh, I put Santiago Salcedo on the development list. Uh, three Irish clubs came in for him. They are all going to play him as a uh, star player. So I was like, yeah, grand, no bother, you could play for one of those three. He took too long to decide, and the transfer window closed. So we're trying to loan him to Colombia at the minute, because uh, the 
Colombian window is still open, I think. So hopefully some Colombian cup club comes in for him. Uh, Noam Emran has decided he wants to leave the club. So there is a club in Rwanda offering 72,000. Uh, potentially going to 115. So we'll have to see if that gets accepted. Um, and Karim Tunde also decided that he wanted to leave the club. Because someone we sold annoyed quite a lot of people. Uh, but as you can see, three clubs made offers. I decided to reject the Aqua United because I didn't think the offer was enough. And uh, the other two were just really terrible loan offers. So as it is, Tunde um, is still at the club. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. We do, however, have um, a couple of players in the under-19s that we're trying to get rid of at the moment because they've drawn strops. Uh, we need to go back to the end of last season to look at some of the players that we have signed. So Santiago Salcedo, um, I think I showed you him previously anyway, but as I said, we're trying to get him a loan because um, he's a good player, but he's not going to get into the first team this year, potentially next year. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Deng Bowen, my Chinese left winger that I had at Biedemann, um in the Journeyman, he has joined us and he's already played in the President's Cup because we made a boo-boo. Uh, we did win the President's Cup, but I'll show you that in a second. Dan Duca is one of our new centre-back options and he is pretty decent for a guy who played for an amateur club up until joining us. Um, as you can see, three and a half star current ability, potentially five star potential. Fantastic. We are getting him to work on his quickness because pace and acceleration, a little bit low uh, for the high line that we play. So we're going to get him learning to, you know, run a bit faster. Uh, Charlie Setford has come in as a goalkeeping option. Because um, as you know, I'm not a massive fan of Prince, but you'll see Prince isn't really an issue anymore. So we'll, we'll worry about that in a minute. Um, he is loan listed, but he is our most valuable player. 1.2 million. Be interesting to see how he gets on. Uh, we do have him uh, loan listed to see if we can get him another club that will actually play him because he was Ajax reject. Uh, but in terms of players that have left since nothing on the outs there, uh, as you can see, no players have come in since but joseph anang has gone to ghana for up to seventy-two thousand. kevin o'connor has unfortunately decided that he well he's decided last year he wanted to go on loan uh so we've led him gone to dundalk 5.5k uh total fee i think they're paying his wages as well yeah they're paying the majority of his wages um and they're paying 300 quid a week so and they have an optional future fee of forty-five thousand. i did not think we'd get any money from him um, I'm a little disappointed because he was like perfect for, um, what's the word? For teaching other players because he's a model citizen, great player, but he didn't want to be at the club anymore. Zidane Iqbal also decided that he wanted to leave. Um, I think him and Chabozo, when Chabozo left for almost 97k, that those two really pissed off a lot of players. Um, so as you can imagine, we've had. Quite a number of higher ranking players um, get annoyed. I don't think there's too many players in the first team. that Like we've got Jumber, that uh, Georgian goalkeeper, in the first team now. There's nobody I've brought up. Like uh, Lee Kinnean is going to be an option this year. Um, I'm going to see how Dara Cal gets on. And then if, he's, if he doesn't get too much game time, we'll put him back or send him back out on loan. Hopefully we won't have to. Um, we're bringing Derek Sullivan into the team. I think he could be amazing. Um, we gave Armino a new contract as well, which uh, he wanted to loan. Nobody's coming for him, so that's a little bit annoying. But if we look at players that are in the under-19s, Prince, we've agreed to sell him. Uh, if we get an offer of 275,000. So far we've had one offer of 35,000 or something like that. It was ridiculous. Um, Farnberger. One, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of Farnberger and Muller or Mulder, who's actually had interest from Trimark Rovers since the start of the summer, but absolutely nothing. Um, Armstrong Ocko Flex decided as well that he wanted to leave because he, we offered him a contract. It was a little under what he wanted, 
straight up rejected it and uh, threw a strop. So he is on the transfer list. We were promised to sell him. Just We just promised to sell him. That's fantastic. Uh, hopefully we can actually shift him. And other than that, we did have... Uh, Kyle Heffernan was a bit... A bit narky because we brought him... He was a squad player. No, he was an impact sub. And we dropped him down to breakthrough prospect. Because he's not really been playing too much football. As you can see, like his... His games last year didn't play an awful lot. Uh, yeah, he got really, really angry. So he went on the transfer list for a while, dropped him to the under 19s, but they decided, nobody decided to sign him. So he's staying with the team for now. Um, as you can see, the Derry game, the President's Cup, we've already won our first trophy. We did win that 4 1, but we had quite a different side. Like Tim Coleman, player you've probably never, ever seen, he, played, he started at left back. Uh, he's. One of the guys that came to our most recent youth intake, 16 years old. He's not very good. He played at left back. And Deng Bowen started. And Denver Addis started because both our other strikers, uh, Osene and Whelan, were both after playing for the under 19s. And I'm not sure why. Because I it pops up saying, like, oh, do you want these players to be available? It comes up here, like, do you, oh, do you want these guys available for the under 19s? And I deselected all of them. But they all ended up playing. Uh, but as you can see, Transfer window closed and uh, Salcedo hadn't accepted any of their offers, which I was super frustrated by. But what can you do? Um, anyway, we do have significant amount of money. Um, the team aren't totally against me. It's 27 players in the first team. We'll have to see how we get on with that. But as I said, next episode will be both legs against Celta Vigo. Um, before we do that, we are expected to win the league at a canter. Um, and we do have quite an, we have our entire back four, uh, one centre midfielder and one striker in the team. I suppose Addis is there and not Whelan. Seeing as how Whelan is favoured to win the top goal scorer. I'm going to have to hear that because Waterford also got promoted. Um, and UCD expected now to finish absolutely stark last. Um, Brian Stapleton, we did, we did try and sign him. They wanted two and a half million for him. It. no thank you so that is where we're going to leave the episode there um leave a comment down below how you think the new players that we've signed are going to do i know there isn't too many of them at the moment uh we do tend to do a lot, a lot of business in the summer window though um because all the contracts are running out in different countries and whatnot makes it so that we can just throw money at different players from other european countries uh so if you did enjoy do make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!